So today we're going to have a leisurely video, a leisurely stroll through a folder I haven't shown you guys, but I've occasionally been asked about. So if you go to my script directory, I've talked about a lot of the scripts that I use every day that are on my system. They're on my GitHub. You can check them out yourself. But some people have noticed that I have this directory called personal in my scripts folder. And it, of course, is another script, scripts folder. And people ask, they're curious, what's going on in personal? Well, personal is just the scripts I use just for myself. They wouldn't make sense for any other people, or at least most of the time. Um, so in this video, I want to show them to you, not necessarily because I expect you to use them, um, but just as examples for the kind of the kind of things that I script or I automate so I don't have to deal with. Um, now, a lot of these scripts aren't actually done. A lot of them I don't actually use that often. Uh, this is probably the least updated directory, but it's worth looking at. Okay, so one of the most important ones is actually at the top. You'll see it's called ban mail. Uh, this is what it looks like. So here's what I want. You know, as, as you may know, I use um, Mutt and I use my Mutt wizard, uh, which basically, basically I send all my, com my email from the command line. I use Mutt. Of course, I can do things like look at images and stuff like that. I can, or if I really want view the view it in HTML or something like that. But ultimately, I do all my email from the command line. So I want to be able to automate banning an email address. And the way I ended up doing that is I have this script. Let me actually show you how it works first. Um, on this other tag right here, I have my email pulled up. I have this particular email pulled up that's a spam message. It's from someone pretending to be YouTube an address that's youtube at devotia.se. And I have it bound, I have, this script has two functions, either block the particular email address or block the entire domain that it's on. Um, so I have them bound to uh, escape B and escape capital B to ban all. So if I, I'm just gonna run it, escape B, lowercase b, and it's gonna ask, do you wanna get rid of this mail? And I'll say, yeah, okay. And what that does, let's actually look at what the script is doing. Um, because I can't, I mean, it's not like my email is, although I download my email to my actual computer, um, my, uh, my email server is the thing that actually determines what mail is spam or not, right? Um, so what I actually do here is I have it run this little command here, which is really just an SSH command. When I run the script, it will log into my server as root, uh, and since I, you know, only have GPG uh, login to my web server, I, you know, sent, I don't have to put in my password, so it'll automatically show up if I have my GPG uh, key pair. Um, and all I do is I run this command. I put in, okay, blacklist this domain in my spam assassin uh, local config file. And then I have systemd reload spam assassin. So that's actually all I do. So there are just two functions here. Um, and what determines which one runs is basically I, I just send an argument to the uh, function if I want it to run the ban all command. And in that case, it just says, okay, well, I'm going to uh, uh, ban not just that mail, but the regular expression of, uh, you know, the entire, in the entire domain. So that's a pretty useful thing. I think in general, Spam Assassin is pretty good at keeping spam out, but every once in a while, um, there's some spam domain that gets through or some particular account that's sending a bajillion emails, so I get rid of it like that. Um, another one, I don't think this one is working right now, I was playing around with it, but uh, initially I had this script to um, get the, like, uh, Library of Congress code for a particular book so I can sort it in my library. That's why I use that. Um, here, I actually have a couple games in here. So this is like old, uh, good old Stronghold Crusader. Uh, I have a, a link to that if I run or run it. So actually we could do that briefly. Let's, let's see what it looks like. Uh, I hope, hope it doesn't re ch or change the uh, screen size or anything like that. Why is it not loaded? Okay, here it is. It has the load up wine. That's what it's doing. So um, okay, yeah, so this one still works. So I have a couple of games. I know people know that I'm very anti-games and stuff like that, but for, I guess, nostalgia purposes, I still have a couple. Uh, I mean, I don't even play them that often, but I just like having old games on my computer. Uh, and so I have Stronghold Crusader, the original Stronghold. I think I have the Lord of the Rings mod, if anyone remembers that. And I also have this command here. Um, it is, I have like every Nintendo 64 ROM on my computer. And if I run this script, I can actually run it in 
uh, it brings up a D menu prompt, and it will give me a list of all the Nintendo 64 games that I have. So if I want to play one, I can just select it and uh, open it up. Let's actually make this full screen or something like that. Uh, so that's just a nice little thing. Oh man, is that loud. So uh, if you want to play some game or something, I have it. Now again, I don't really do that that often unless I'm just goofing off. Um, again, like uh, video games to me, they're not, um, they're not something I, I recommend doing as a habit, but you know, I'll have them just because why not. Okay, so fix audio. I've mentioned this in another video. This is just a process... Uh, I'm gonna run this script on the recording I'm doing now because when I do a recording on my face uh, the the audio sync is a little off so I actually run this script on it afterwards to sync up the audio and also change the codec so it's easier to up, update. Uh, this was just me playing around trying to get um, uh, mail server information. Here's another script that's pretty important. It's actually an xrander command. This is very useful if you want to do screencasting. Um, because by default, my laptop, if I'm just on my laptop, I don't have a, a 1080p display. So if I were to record on it, you'd get the weird resolution that I have in that computer. Uh, but with this xrander command, it just scales up whatever your resolution is to uh, you know, 1920 times 1080p. So if I want to record on my laptop, I run this script. So xrander will change to a 1080p display and then I record. So when I upload it, it's actually in better quality than the quality that it is on my computer. Um, it does look a little funny though. Uh, so here's another mail thing that I have. Uh, this is, it's called mail arc uh, for mail archive. And uh, basically, I run this every once in a while. So I keep very few, you can actually see here, I'm not gonna go into my emails, but you'll see in my inbox, I only have, I don't delete things, first off. I don't delete email, I always store them. I only have 168 emails in my inbox. Well, that's because once I, I think I'm pretty much done, I've, I've mailed all the mails I'm gonna mail, I will run this command, which takes all of my mail and put it, puts it in an archive folder. So I actually have my mail sorted into all these different archive, uh, you know, these different archives based on when I got them. Or like, they're usually named after place I live, places I lived. When I lived in Arizona, I put all the mail in that box. Uh, so I run this mail archive command. And the other benefit of that is, it, I mean, let's say hypothetically my email server was hacked, right? Well, it's not a big difference. I'll only lose a couple mail. Like, uh, I'm not going to lose all like all this mail here. It is kept kept exclusively offline, all this stuff here. The only mail that's on my server is like the current inbox. So if in the worst case scenario, I lose my email server or something like that, I haven't really lost that much. And I can just do manual backups of the rest of the stuff. Um, so I find this very useful to sort through mail. Um, and uh, yeah, it's just pretty sweet. Uh, make tor, I don't think I've used this in a while. This is to make a torrent file. Uh, add a bunch of trackers by default. It isn't actually working because uh, some of these trackers, or it is working, but a lot of these trackers aren't active anymore, so it generates problems. Um, so one little script I use all the time is actually this thing, it's called nextvid. Very simple. What this does is, it, it, okay, so my internet out here isn't super good, and a lot of times I wanna download a video, um, and it, well, basically I'll be like, okay, let's say I want to learn how to propagate a blueberry bush. Okay. So I'll go on YouTube and it, you know, if I want to watch 30 videos on it, so I know, I don't know which one's good or not. Um, uh, you know, I can't do that in one sitting. So what I do is I have this script and basically what I do is I go over and I copy all the video links to, you know, let's say I want this one. Okay. I'll copy this video link and then I'll run this script. And what it does is it takes what's in my clipboard and it queues it in YouTube DL, I mean, using task spooler. Um, so basically I can queue up a whole bunch of videos to download and uh, watch them a little bit later. So that's usually what I'll do. Um, now, of course, uh, my internet isn't so bad that I can't watch videos live, but it's just when I wanna, especially when I wanna have an archive of them, it's nice to be able to queue them up in task spooler and watch them over time. Um, Let's see, so these three are related to my, my uh, podcast. I haven't used them in a while. They're just to automatically tag some things. Um, and then I already talked about the, the Nintendo thing. Uh, this script, I think I was just processing text. Um, another thing I have is a screener, and this is a very, uh, I guess we used to say ghetto script. Uh, but what this does is I have this run whenever I start my graphical environment, and it just checks to see what screens I have attached. 
and it will use like the um, you know the display port if that is attached uh, it, you know as first priority then it'll try the HDMI and then VGA and stuff like that uh, and that's just because if I have my laptop uh, connected to its port or uh, dock or whatever I want it to automatically use only the other screen so a lot of people will have scripts like this just with like preset X render configurations for each of you know in this case you just set what output you want what size you want it uh, and I also turn my laptop off so a lot of people will do these you know have X render scripts configured for when they start up and they want a specific configuration. I don't actually have a render installed. A render is one where you manually select like visually how you want it. I don't use that. I use only my own uh, scripts for that. Um, so stab vid, this is stabilize a video. I actually talked about this a couple videos ago. This is a new one. Um, and basically it just runs the uh, FFmpeg library for stabilizing a shaky video. So I now run all, you know, all the screencasts I have, I run Fix Audio on, and all the uh, ones where I'm walking around with the phone, I use uh, StabBit on. Although sometimes it, it takes a little long to compile, so I actually have a desktop in the other room that's a little faster, um, and so sometimes I'll just SSH, or I'll rsync the file over to that one, and have it process it, and then bring it back to this computer if I need it, or something like that. Uh, Stronghold, that's a game. Uh, tag. Uh, tag is for... Uh, tagging like uh, what is it Vorbis music files uh, it's just because it's hard to do like this is the stupid syntax of uh, tagging a Vorbis file and so it's just because it's so annoying um, I just have a different script for that where you can give it command line options like you can give it uh, artist title stuff like that I just find it much it's it, this is really just a wrapper script because the uh, syntax and Vorbis comment is, is sort of stupid um, and also I'm gonna be using this for uh, uh, tagging other audio like podcast things and stuff like that. I want it uh, I, I sort of want this a little more extendable um, Let's see tech quote. I think this was like a yeah said replacement script that replaces quotes with uh, Quotate you know how in LaTeX you're supposed to have quotes like this Okay, if you want it to format correctly, this is just to re replace those or replace the originals with that or something like that um, I don't I think I, I think I forgot that that was there, so I don't even use it. Uh, let's see. This was also me trying to feel, figure out how to use Thunderbird's um, uh, mail server information thing. Uh, I was thinking about using that for Mail Wizard. This is just a minor thing. Uh, up and up all are for updating my website. Basically, I just keep all my webs uh, like I have a local repository in a particular folder where I have all my website files, and I run this script to update my website. The only trick is that I also have this line here. So basically, if I go to, let's say I go to my website uh, location, you know, local source website. Um, I have one thing on my website. It looks, maybe I'll just bring it up. Okay. It looks something like, uh, why is it taking so long to load? It's not even online. Okay, so I have this recent blog posts thing. And I, I don't change that manually. I have it update automatically. And how that actually looks is, um, I think it looks like this. So it's just one line here. I have all the last five blog posts there. Um, when I run this script, what it does is it automatically searches my blog index for the most recent five posts in case I've made a new one. And it replaces the pre-existing line here with that line, okay? Basically, so I don't have to worry about manually changing that. It does it automatically. Um, that's that's the magic of just using grep and sed and stuff for, like that for uh, for that. Uh, let's see, update info. What is this? Oh yeah, this is something I was trying to do a while ago where I can like automatically get my number of YouTube subscribers and stuff like that. I think I was gonna do something like uh, automatically put some information on my website about my you know GitHub or YouTube. I never bothered doing it. Um, Let's see, and then all the other ones, okay, the V copy, V diff, and V grab, those are sort of embarrassing, but I'll talk about those. I talked about WP in a video a, a little bit ago. That's a script where it just opens up a list, you know, all of my, uh, randomly selects my wallpapers and displays them, and I can choose one to set as my new wallpaper or something like that. Now the other ones, V copy, V diff, and V grab, now people are gonna make fun of me for this, but this is the laziest, so I have this really stupid way of tracking my dot files. Um, like obviously I have a separate 
location where I keep my dot files that I actually upload to GitHub. Um, and so I have these scripts that basically, you know, if I run it on a file, it will manually, let's say I update my ZSHRC or something like that. Well, once I do that, I will run this file on it and it will move it into the location. It will move it to that other directory where my repository is, uh, you know, my Git repository is, and then I can update it. So this is like sort of a lazy way to do it. I've just done it this way for so long. These scripts are actually really old. Uh, the only interesting one is VDIF. If I want to um, get a, a NeoVim interactive diff between a file that I'm using on my local machine and the one that exists in my repository. Uh, let me actually do an example of this uh, just so you know what I'm talking about. Okay, so let's say, um, I don't know, let's do the i3 config or something like that. So if I VDIF it, okay, um, it brings up a diff, so on the left is gonna be the file as it exists on, oh, why did I close out of it, sorry. Um, the file on the left is my i3 config on my own machine. The file on the right is the one that is in my repository. So if I wanna move stuff, you know, someone updated something on my repository, like a, a change that was a PR, uh, I can manually move this stuff over here or something like that, or vi you know, visually compare them. Uh, so that's VDIF. Well, VDIF is only if you want to um, make very specific changes. Uh, VGrab automatically over, that gets what's on my repository and move it moves it to my actual files. And VCopy is take a file that I've changed and move it to the repository. And VDIF is if you want to do, anyway, that, that's a sort of contemplated or uh, complicated way of explaining them all. So anyway, those are some of the scripts that I have. Um, again, most of these I don't really, um, I, I don't really door deal. What is this? Uh, this was something. Oh, I remember that. That was stupid. I'm going to get rid of that. Um, so th these are the kind of scripts that I have for automating things. Obviously, um, most of them, I mean, are not thing. The reason I don't put these up is not because I'm secretive about them. I just don't really think most of them are useful to people. Or most of them, even if they're useful, they're not, you know, let's say there are many times you might want to convert a a tech file into, or you know, change your quotations or something like that. It's not a script important enough to actually upload, so I, I've never done it. But um, yeah, so those are the those are the scripts I use. Anyway, so that's just been a leisurely stroll through all these. Um, I don't know. Hope it gives you some ideas, and I'll see you guys next time.